you've done plenty of pre-seasons. How's this one been? Uh, have you been relatively fit, injury-free, been able to have a good pre-season? Yeah, it has been. Um, look, the more experience you have, um, you know, how to get through the pre-season and, um, you know, just exciting to be at round one now. The footy starts tonight, which is fantastic, and it'll be good to see the boys run around and, um, you know, gearing up for our game on Saturday. But, yeah, look, the pre-season's been good for myself personally and and for the group, uh, we had a tough game in Lismore, the last pre-season game, which really helped us out there with the heat. Uh, you know, it was a good thing for us, I think, and um, you know, we're all excited uh, leading into this weekend. Has this been one of the better, best pre-season preparations for you for a while there? Oh, definitely for a while, yeah. Uh, probably the last three or four years I hadn't had a pre-season, but the last two years I've had one, which has uh, led me into a good year. So look, looking forward to, uh, to get off to a good start this weekend. How did you pull up after that game against the Suns? Uh, yeah, pretty good. It was hot. Uh, the boys were pretty tired after that. You know, it was um, you know a bit different playing in those types of conditions, but I think it was good for both teams. And um, you know, that final hit out before you get a weekend off leading into this week has um, you know put us in good stead for the weekend. Did you, um, with the new rules, no runners, guys like yourself, Luke Hodge, um, he's sure are going to be, I reckon, pretty important for the coaches. Did you notice anything different? In yeah, that game you played or. Yeah, well, you don't see the runner at all, basically, because by the time they run out, um, they've got to get off anyway. So, yeah, look, it's up to the players to to kind of make decisions on the fly, which I think we've got a you know a good bunch of leaders who know how to uh, to do that, and then we'll back ourselves in. If you know if the call's wrong, the coaches will you know get a message pretty quickly to the bench, and you can uh, change it up. But yeah, look, you're gonna have to make a lot of just uh, decisions on the fly, which uh, you know we're comfortable with. We've uh, we've trained for that, and. Um, but a lot of the boys know what to do anyway in certain situations. We train for it every day and, um, you know, whether it's a tight game or what they're doing, you've just got to figure that out pretty quickly. And I was going to say with yourself, Randy, Grundy, when Nick Smith comes back, you've got a lot of experience here. Do you think that gives you guys an advantage against maybe a, a younger side that doesn't have that experience in the back half? Uh, maybe. I mean, you know, playing in the back half, you can, see, uh, you can kind of see up the ground and see what's happening and what's unfolding. The guys in the mid you know, may find it a bit harder because they're on the inside, but... You know, we'll try and talk to them as much as possible. But, uh, you know, the experience does help. But in the end, um, you know, most players know what they're doing. They train for it every single pre-season. And, um, you, you know, you just got to get it right on the day. Do you expect to play pretty much the whole season across half-back? Or is there any chance you might venture into the midfield at all? Uh, oh, look, I'd say I'd be uh, half-back through that uh, region. We've got a lot of guys floating through the midfield now with Millsy and Heaney, um, you know, going to move into that mix and Papley. So... Uh, we've got a lot of options in there, which I don't, um, you know, which we haven't had in the past. Really, we've, you know, we've focused on those core guys, but it'll be good to give those guys a bit of a rest and a bit of a different look for us. Um, so that'll be nice to see this year. In terms of the balance, in terms of the squad, there's also a lot to be made about the larger chunk of the younger players in the squad. Do you think, you know, obviously some experience has been lost? Do you think the balance is there still to have a successful season? Yeah, look, we're pretty confident. Um, you know. Our younger players were blooded a lot over the last few years. Uh, they've played, you know, 20 to 30 games, which is a good mark, and they'll be looking to step up and, and really assert their careers this season. You know, Will Haywood, Papley, uh, Jonesy, those types of players that we've got full faith in. They've played in big games. They know what's required. Um, and then we've got that good youth coming through. Um, you know, the draftees that come through this year look pretty good, and I'm sure we'll see them this year. And, um, and then you've got those older players who can kind of blend in as well. So, look, we're... Uh, we're really comfortable with where we sit. Sure. You, you played a fair bit of footy with Mickey Yo. He was sometimes towards the end of his career given some special provisions training-wise. Do you, do you have to do everything or you managed a little bit there? Uh, I like to do everything. I think uh, for me, getting out there and training is what um, you know, works for me. Um, you know, when I don't train or you, um, you, know, you try and take days off, I don't think that works for me. But um, you know, other guys are different. But uh, for me, you know, it's always nice to be training and just keeping, uh, you know, keeping up to date. In terms of experience, you've obviously gone through a lot of like, pre-seasons. I mean, I imagine the whole kind of structure has changed a great deal since you sort of started out with your first pre-season in terms of the science. And, and yeah, like absolutely. That. The change, you know, we were getting home at 12 o'clock most days. Uh, now it's, you know, 7 till 5. You've got meetings, so many more meetings and uh, your recovery stuff and then your game plan and training. So, uh, look, it's evolved, but... Um, still get out of bed every morning and really excited to come to training. I love training and love being around the, the football club uh, environment. Um, but definitely it's um, the, the hours put in is, you know, 
has gone up considerably over the years, which is, um, you know, what, you know, that, that's going to happen. And in terms of where you are now, I guess, looking back, say, I don't know, 10 years, do you feel, people talk about, you know, people getting older and age, but do you feel in terms of the regime and your fitness and your, you know, the mental side, the physical side, whatever, that are you in as good a shape now, if you like, as you were when you were, you know, 24? Oh, I think mentally you're probably a lot stronger and more resilient and, and understand what's required more. Um, you know, you're still learning the ropes at that young age and obviously your body's in better condition when you're younger. Um, but I think you know how to recover better now and, um, you know, playing with those younger players, you know, you know keeps you up to date as well and, and you know, you want to compete with them and, and still have that competitive edge. With Nick Smith missing, obviously, a huge part of that back line, do you, have you got someone specific player who can perform that small backman shutdown role or just uh, have to work together to... Yeah, I think you work together nowadays. It's You can't really have that shutdown player, so to speak. Um, the forward lines are changing so frequently throughout the game. You've just got to get that best matchup for that moment. Um, we've got Rams who can play tall or small, who can, you know, if someone's on fire, you know, we can put him to someone, um, you know, to quiet them down. But, um, yeah, look, that evolves and the mix change every few minutes in the game. So it's hard to, to lock down on one player. But, uh, you know, we've, got, we've certainly got different options. And with, with Lewis back, I guess people outside the club wouldn't realise how important he is to that back line. But with him back in, gives Rampy yeah. a bit of more freedom to do that sort of thing? Yeah, it does. He's a, you know, he's a critical, important player for us and we rate him very highly. And, um, yeah, last year had a few... Uh, hamstring troubles and uh, we missed him dearly but uh, look he's had a good pre-season and uh, it would be nice to have him out there running around with him you know when on the weekend. Get, sorry, when you get to this stage in your career do you kind of look at it in a slightly different way that you relish sort of every moment more because you know that it's not going to last forever? I guess when, you, when you're sort of young and starting out in any sport you think oh this is fantastic it's just going to be forever and ever. Do you look at it, do you perhaps cherish every moment, every training session, every game, every point? more now than you perhaps did as, as a youngster? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, you know, you take a lot more for, uh, things in. Um, you know, one of my favourite parts is, you know, when you're driving a game and seeing the crowd uh, come in, just looking at their faces and, you know, knowing you're about to, you know, they're coming to watch you, I guess. And, um, you know, those little moments, I think, you know, exciting and you take that in a bit more. Um, you know, you're probably not as nervous before a game as uh, when you are a young player, but, um, yeah, I guess you cherish the moments a lot more. Which then begs the question, how long can you keep going? How long do you want to keep going? Well, I've only, I haven't even started round one yet for this year, <laughs> so we'll just leave it at that for now. <laughs> What's uh, you got just as much power around here as the coach. What's your call on Lance playing on? Uh, I want to see him out there. Um, look, he's been training um, solidly for a while now, and um, you know, he's got to get through today, then they'll speak. But, um, you know, I'll back him in every day of the week. What's it been like having him? even just out on the track because for a while there it was pretty grim. Yeah, I think he was, you know, it was a slow build up but then, you know, he really turned the corner and he's just gone, you know, from strength uh, to strength from that on and the way he's been training, he's had a real mission about it. Um, you know, he's training at a really high level. He always does but there was a little bit of an edge to him which was, uh, you know, nice to see. So hopefully he gets through today and, um, you know, I think, well, for me it's an easy, an, an, an easy decision but, um, you know, we'll see what they say. What do you expect from the Bulldogs? Uh, I mean, they've, they've kind of developed that brand of football over the last few years under Luke Beveridge. I don't know if you've seen anything different in the JLT at all. Oh, look, I think they've got back to what they're really good at. Um, yeah, we've got so much respect for them. We've had some really good battles with them over the past few years. The games have been pretty tight. Um, you know, both teams, um, as I said, respect each other highly. They're, you know, their hands in tight are so, uh, so elite. Um, you know, their midfielders are, are some of the best in the competition. And um, so, you know, it, it's always midfield v midfield to see who gets that ascendancy. But, you know, that's where it's going to be won and lost. Their mids are uh, uh, McRae and Hunter and they've got Libba back now, those hard nuts inside with elite hands. Uh, we're going to have to be on our game to, uh, to you know, to close that down. Uh, did we start poorly last year? The year before, we were Norton six. Um, no, uh, not really. Um, you know, we're going to every game and um, you know, planning to win, planning to win. Um, so you know, our form's been pretty good in the JLT. We had a poor one against the Giants, but we played well against them the week before. And 
it was a nice tune up against Gold Coast last week, so uh, we go in pretty confident. You played in premiership winning teams and grand finals. Does this team have the potential to, to do that well this season? Look, I think we've got a good mix, and um, we understand you know what's required. Um, you know, the competition's so close now. You've um, you've got to be on every single week, and that's just uh, the reality of the competition. And uh, you know, we you know we don't want to look too far ahead, but we think we've got a good mix to to really push the top teams. Um, so that's where we're at. And but it starts with the doggies this week, and you know, hopefully, a big crowd down at Marvel Stadium. Um, disappointing, obviously, the last sort of 24 hours, the news cycle has been dominated by this dreadful trolling of players. I guess social media, when we were starting out, was probably you know it's in its infancy. I mean, non-existent. Is, it, <laughs> <laughs> is that something that players you know, do have to be more aware of? I mean, in Taylor's case, it's just it's simply a, a great athletic shot, and she's been victim to these these idiots. But is social media something that players do have to be? wary of it because it's a force for good but you've also yeah. got to be wary of the pitfalls yeah absolutely and we speak about it to our players all the time I'm personally not on social media um, so I haven't seen a lot of the stuff but I know our players after a win or loss you know they cop a lot of um, abuse um, so I think it's good that people are calling it out and um, you know, the people behind the the screens um, you know, can say whatever they want And but I think uh, the conversation started and hopefully um, you know, we can celebrate all forms of football and um, and just appreciate uh, what women and men bring to the game.